Hi, this is Steve with Jetters Northwest, and our subject today is mounting a jetter inside a service van. Now, that's becoming increasingly popular with a lot of you guys that are in the field doing this work. So we'll talk a little about why would you want to do a service van, and then the do's and don'ts of doing a service van type installation for your jetter. Okay, now we're looking at the tail end of a service van here. This is a extended Ford Transit, one of my favorites as far as good use of space. Now, it used to be really with van skid jetters that you'd have this big rectangle that is a jetter machine and a water tank, and it really took up a great percentage of the whole floor. Now that jetters have become more compact, like our, our Brute series jetters here, we're looking at a 12 gallon per minute, 3000 PSI Brute, or in the same size, we have a nine gallon per minute, 4000 PSI unit. Um, much smaller footprint than back in the day. Uh, another thing that's made a huge difference is the water tank frame, which you see to the left, and the jetter frame are separate. They're on separate skids, so they do not need to be next to each other. Now in this situation, I call this a L-shaped side door configuration. Um, here again, you can just open up the side door, pull the jetter hose out, all the controls are right there at the panel, and the jetter tank water tank is right behind it. That makes for a lot of room left over here at the back door. This particular customer is going to put a partition in so when you open the back doors you won't even see the jetter. Um, they'll have a partition between the jetter also of course and the cab. But uh, what we've got here is from the jetter to the back door right now we've got 10 feet of, of uh, floor space left over. Now our tank protrudes out just a little bit. That's a four foot long tank skid. Um, by the way, it's available 100 gallon, 150 gallon, and 200 gallon. Um, but if I move the tape over to the end of the tank skid, we still have eight feet. So there's quite a bit of room here to have your sewer machines, your cameras, and whatever supply that you need to have with you. So space efficiency, which wasn't there maybe back in the day, is definitely now available in a van skid type setup. Okay, now we're at the tail end of the same van. And again, we got the same brute jetter, same tank skid here. This is a 100 gallon, by the way. And again, to make the point, you can see it more clearly here. The tank has its own skid, the jetter its own frame and own mounting skid. And so again, they can be moved individually. Here we have what I call a side-by-side -side configuration. And um, this can be done at the tail like we are here. We've opened the double doors and everything is right in front of us. Or you could have it at the side door as a side-by-side -side jetter and tank facing that way. Um, doesn't matter. And this configuration is where a guy would want as much forward space as possible to access from the side door. Here we've got almost 10 feet up there. It's basically the reverse of what we had in the previous scene. Um, all that space is available up front. This takes up about four feet of depth in this side-by-side -side configuration. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this tank and move it up toward the cab for a little bit of weight distribution. You really wouldn't want to do it this way if you're going to drive with full tank of water. And by the way, often with service jetting, you're using the customer's water and really driving around with an empty tank. And with the tail end set up like this, you really would leave this empty pretty much as you're driving around. So we'll go ahead and move the tank forward and give you a look at that view. Okay, to underscore the point of how the tank module does not need to be next to the jetter module. You see here we push the tank up toward the cab, we left the jetter in place at the tail. Basically we're just connected by two hoses. We have a draw hose which is drawing water from the tank and then every time you turn the jetting valve off or you hit your remote control off, it has to return water to the tank so we just have a return line. Uh, we can extend those hoses as long as needed. The, the point I'll make to you is if you do this, do not use a cheap hose. This is a steel braided, heavy duty suction hose. It won't collapse under a suction. It's not going to kink. Um, and also don't undersize. You can see here we've used an inch and a half. Uh, so it can easily flood water to the jetter. And this jetter can just drink right out of the water tank. So again, this is one of those configurations where maybe you want to carry water. It's going to create a lot of weight, just 100 gallons of water is 830 plus pounds. Uh, but you want to keep the jetter at the tail. So now you put the tank up here, you're going to have a wider tank, larger capacity. Again, this is 100 gallons. Uh, 150 gallon of ours would be another 10 inches. 
200 gallon would be another 10, which is basically doubles this. Um, also, it's very common for guys to lay the tank out so that it's parallel to the seats. Let me show you what I mean. Just take this uh, skid frame, move it over. And again, these tanks are really light when they're empty. So uh, some of you guys, I know, like to operate portable. You might have the brute with wheels and the portability kit on it. Uh, and you'll just block the tank in place. And it's nice when you don't want the tank in your van, you can just take it out. But uh, for those of you who want to bolt it down, having a frame like this, it's got vertical supports to retain the tank, nice bolt holes and sturdiness, and really lock it down. It's easy to drop the tank into it. And again, we just connect the hoses, as we described. And, and with this frame, by the way, it elevates the tank so you're drawing from underneath, not having a side fitting where you're not quite draining all the way up. Uh, so this just lays out the configuration again in another way. Just to give you guys ideas, we thought we'd throw at you some different configurations of, again, having a separate tank module, separate of the skid jetter module, and give you some ideas of how you could lay out a van for a skid mounted jetting system. Again, this is Steve Jones with Jetters Northwest. Thanks so much for watching today. Check out more of our videos on our YouTube site. Just search Jetters Northwest. And check out our website, jettersnorthwest.com. Thanks again, and happy jetting.